Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Well, I hate missing my scheduled posting dates, but this one took a little longer to do. And tonight we're going to take a look at the Trade Federation Multi-Troop Transport. This was released in 2012 when the Phantom Menace 3D came out in the theaters. So let's head to that table and check this out. Can you even see the box? It's a little too big. I can't, can't fit it all in. Quick look at the box. Nice image of Darth Maul in the top right side. Got a great look at the vehicle. Kind of a mix of real world look with what the toy actually is because the rack that comes out of the front is not how it looked like in the movie, but they still gave some battle damage and scarring to the vehicle that you're seeing, which as you will see is not actually on the toy. Otherwise though, it's just a great scene in general with Naboo in the background. Left side does show off that motorized troop deployment rack. And of course the big notation that it includes 20 battle Battle droid figures and you got a photo off to the side and through the window you see the included obi-wan kenobi figure along with a handful of the battle droids sides of the packaging just shows off the vehicle a little bit along with a couple battle droids the top side and bottom of the packaging looks similar to the front with a nice scene of naboo in the background various troop transports being shown and some battle droids on the back side, you got your larger image of the toy that you're actually getting with some battle droids or probably all of the battle droids being shown off in the photo, along with various vehicle features being shown off. Top left side, of course, you got your name of the vehicle along with a brief description about it. Actually, a rather lengthy paragraph. And then along the right side, it shows how that troop deployment rack extends out of the vehicle. Taking it out of the packaging, you got some assembling to do, but not that much. Of course, you have some stickers to apply, but once you get those on, you attach the repulsor lifts to each side of the body, and then each corresponding side has a door that attaches onto there. It just all snaps right into place. Canister snaps in on each side of the vehicle. Your forward cannons then attach to each side. And then on the top inside the canopy, you got two missile launchers that you slide these into. And of course, as I mentioned, 20 battle droids, the OB-1, slide three AA batteries in there, and you're good to go. I gotta say overall, this is a pretty heavy vehicle. I don't have a scale, I don't know how much it weighs, but there is certainly a good amount of weight to it. And as far as length, I'm sorry, I can't tell you how long it is because I lost my tape measure. But it is a pretty good size vehicle. Not as much detail to it, especially like what you see with some of the vintage collection vehicles, more recently with Jabba's sail barge. But this also isn't that type of vehicle. Granted, there should be some sort of weathering or, you know, even like you saw in the box, some scorch marks and stuff. But still, it's looking really good. Very nice, polished. I will say overall, I feel like the color is a little too light. I think it should be a darker brown. At least that's how it looked in the movie. Aside from that, though, obviously, as you can see, you got some panels that are that darker brown color in contrast to that light brown color that you're getting for the majority of the vehicle. Some nice detailing along the top back side there, these little gray vents or something. The only bits of mechanical features being shown or sculpted into that plastic is just behind those front cannons. Nothing overly special here, but still some decent detailing being done. Each side has these panels that do open up. Inside here, you got a lot more detailing going on. First on the top side of that door as you flip it down, you got some various lines, pipes and stuff sculpted in there. A set of eight foot pegs, you can also put your battle droids, stand them on top of that. And then within that compartment, lots of detailing here for various engine components and such. You do have a weapons rack that you can slide five of those blasters into. Holds them pretty well into place. Otherwise, you got some console detailing. Inside that other panel, things are looking exactly the same except for the detailing of the stickers. Each side of the vehicle also has these black lines. Those are just little bits of indents in there. There's a ladder for battle droids to walk up. You get two sets of handles placed towards the upper part of those steps. Or we'll call them steps. But battle droids do hold onto those handles pretty well. Along the front, you got two little cannons that just articulate up and down. No side-to-side -side movement. Nothing shoots out on those. Pretty basic detailing there. On the back of the vehicle, you got a little bit more detailing being shown off here. This is also where the speaker is kept for playing back those sound effects of the various features that are going to be used when you open and close that deployment rack. On the top of the vehicle, you got a little bit more detailing happening here with some vents, maybe some various engine parts or something. Uh, nothing overly done though. You also have a set of six foot pegs that you can stand your battle droids up on the top. This top part also opens up, allowing you to play some battle droids in here for some fun playtime. Nothing overly exciting happening in here, but you got a lot of detailing, basically just a lot of console worker positions. Handful of stickers that you place in there yourself. The canopy up top does flip open and gives you three driver seats. And also on the back side of this canopy, you can slide out those cannons and also slide a battle droid in there, kind of give him a command post. Once you got your droid in there, you can see he's got a little slot in there where his head can kind of poke through, so that's pretty cool. Otherwise though, detailing in here is relatively basic. Those cannons within the canopy, there's a little button on the top that can shoot the missiles out that are included. So that works well. It shoots out at a pretty good little pace there. 
Each driver's compartment though has some pretty decent detailing going on for the console area. But aside from those stickers, you're not getting any other coloring in there or no other special painting or anything. The battle droids have no problem sitting into the compartment. You get four pilot battle droids that have the backpack sculpted onto them. A little bit more articulation, not much, but you do get more. And of course, those legs are separately sculpted. So they're the ones that are going to sit up here. Also on the top is where you're going to find your buttons to operate that deployment rack. One to extend, the other to retract. On that center button, if you do a quick push, here's what you're going to hear. If you do a longer push, here's the sounds you're going to get, and there's three different sets of those. Onto this button now to extend that deployment rack. Obviously when I push this you're going to hear a bunch of sounds to go along with that. So let's watch and take a listen to those. Not quite like you saw in the movie, this is where things are a little bit different, but for playability features I think this works very well. It's great that it holds 16 battle droids, and that you also get the 16 battle droids. I'll show them off later, but this set of 16 does have a little foot stand molded to the bottom of the feet, and that works in favor here because it holds them well into place. Detailing for that deployment rag looks pretty good. Pretty nice light blue color, but otherwise, as I've been saying, for the rest of the vehicle, you're not getting any other weathering or any other paint application to it. It is a pretty basic looking vehicle in that regards. If you wanted, you can continue to manually lift up the droids and then push the center button here on the front of this deployment rack. Surrender, Jedi. And that'll fold out the droids once again. When you're ready to have the droids go back into the vehicle, push the button on the top of the vehicle to retract that deployment rack. And the other feature to this vehicle are the sets of wheels on the bottom of the vehicle. It rolls nicely. I think that's about all you can ask for that. Also along the bottom of the vehicle, you got some pretty nice detailing going on here. No, you rarely ever see it, but it is still nice when you see that added touch of detail being done to something that you're probably never going to see on a vehicle. And moving on to look at those battle droids, you do get 20 of them as I mentioned earlier. 16 of them are considered just your basic battle droids. They're going to have the feet molded together with these stands at the bottom. And then the other four figures that you get are considered your pilots. They've got the backpacks molded onto the center of the body. The feet do move independent of each other. So real quick on the turntable looking at that basic battle droid. Sculpting to it's looking really good. Looks, well I mean it looks like a battle droid. Pretty basic detailing but you're getting what you expect to see. The head sculpting's looking good. We'll say though that these heads just don't stay on well at all. They continually pop off with the slightest movement. The black painting for the eyes are looking pretty good. Through the center of the chest, you got a pretty good sculpt going on there. Uh, you know, these are just pretty thin, flimsy little things. Even with the single carded battle droids, there was never all that much to them. And, you know, all of mine have kind of just slumped over in time because the plastic can't support the weight. But through the arms, you're getting some pretty decent detailing in there for the mechanical bits of the droid. Along the backside, you do have a little indent in there. I'll show that off later, but you can store the blaster onto his back. Otherwise, down through the legs, you know, I mean, like I said, Battle droid, that's how they're supposed to look. While it is a little bit of a bummer to get 16 figures and have the foot stand attached, I get why it's there. The point of these things is to fill that deployment rack and you know, without that stand, they would probably fall over quite often and not support the weight of the figure as a whole. And now taking a look at the pilot battle droid, as I mentioned, you got four of those. Aside from the fact that he's got a backpack and the legs are not molded together with that stand, the detailing of the sculpt looks identical for everything else. The head, the chest, the legs, and that backpack detailing to it's looking pretty good. The antenna's fairly straight, 
they're holding pretty well on mine. They're not all they're not bent all that much. And just to note, the backpack is not removable. That is molded as part of this chest piece. Articulation for that standard battle droid as well. Short but sweet. The head's on a ball joint, so it pivots all over the place and it'll twist around. Only his right arm will swivel. This left arm is sculpted down to the thigh. No articulation movement there. As for the pilot droids, though, you do still... Whoop, pop that right off, but your head's on a ball joint, so that'll spin around. Both shoulders do swivel. Legs are going to fold up pretty high there and can wrap around his backside like this. As for accessories, well, you get 20 blasters. Sculpting to them looks pretty appropriate for battle droid blasters. Looks just like it should. Pretty nice detailing in there for the blaster also. No special weathering or anything. And it fits pretty good in the right hand of all the battle droids. For the 16 battle droids that you get, that little notch that I mentioned earlier, you can slide that right into his back and keep these in place. As for the pilot ones though, nowhere to put those blasters, just going to have to keep them in the hand or set them off to the side. And moving on to the included Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, this is just a reissue of the figure that came out in the Saga collection back in 2006. Difference here, still getting the lightsaber, still getting that soft good braid in the hair, but you're not getting the cloak and you're also not getting his little communicator. Aside from that, there's not too much difference between the two figures. Eyes are a little bit more blue, a little bit bigger in that original 2006 release. Flesh tones look like they're maybe just a little bit different. And it could just be a little bit of a factory variance, but the painting on the belt seems to be a little bit different also. Maybe just a shade difference in the boots. Not going to hit a full detailed review on this figure since, well, I'll eventually get to that single carded release. So the articulation, the head's going to swivel pretty tight, but it does get around. Both the arms are going to do a full 360 swivel. And your elbows, you just have swivel articulation there for both of them. It's got a full 360 at the waist. The legs actually do have a pretty good bend on it. Plastic's obviously a little bit stiff, but you're still getting about a 45 degree angle there. And they still go back just a little bit. And then what you do get with this Obi-Wan Kenobi figure is his lightsaber. Once again, that looks like the original 2006 lightsaber. Pretty good sculpt to it. Certainly looks like Obi-Wan's lightsaber. The blue of the blade is looking like a pretty nice vibrant blue color. And it does hold pretty well in his left hand. So overall for me, I, you know, the point of this release is that vehicle. And I gotta say I'm really liking it. It retailed for 130, 140 bucks, I think. And that was back in 2012. And to get a total of 21 figures with it was all in all a pretty good value. Granted, 16 of those figures only have two points of articulation, but the point of it was to fill up that deployment rack. And with that, you're still getting a very nice electronic motorized vehicle. And quite sizable at that. Certainly, it's great to get a key vehicle from a movie, but for them to give it so much playable features, such as that deployment rack, the canopy up top, the two sides that flip open, I think all in all, this is a pretty good vehicle, and certainly one still worth adding to your collection. And that wraps up this look at the multi-troop transport. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this vehicle in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching.